times <clears throat> I'm going to read the same passages. But I realize that the more I read, the more I study, the more I need to read the study because, man, you know, this is the Word of God. If I think I know it all, that's the moment really I don't know how to know. So here I am again in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 1. And I just pray the Lord that He opens my understanding to His Word. This is the Word of God. These are the pure words of God. These are not just, you know, fairy tales for those who believe. For those who don't believe, well, they made their choice. I might completely disagree with them, but it's their choice. Okay. So Paul wrote, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we receive mercy, we faint not. It would be good to see what kind of ministry he's talking about. So we go in chapter 3, and he says, Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Hmm. Wonderful. Praise God. Paul says, we faint not. We know meaning, the meaning of the word faint, you know, I'm fainting. Oh, we, we don't give up. We don't stop. Why? Well, we have a ministry. It's called the Ministry of Reconciliation. We have, we have a word. It's called the Word of Reconciliation. Now, we are saved by grace and kept by grace. But it is, it is important that we preach the gospel of grace to others so they can hear and they can believe. To be saved because listen God has done it all to save us if we don't believe we can't be saved simple as that so we need to preach the gospel of Christ the gospel of the cross in any possible way and that's why I'm here trying to do this video on YouTube so the people hearing it they can have a possibility to choose, to believe, and receive, to be saved and sealed. Many people hear it and they don't believe. For whatever reason, it's not up to me now. Paul says, therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we receive mercy, we faint not. We receive mercy. We receive grace. We receive mercy. Praise God. What is mercy? Well, because of Christ, because of his sacrifice, because he died for our sins, was buried, rose again the third day for our justification, God gives us grace and gives us mercy. Mercy is when God doesn't give us what we deserve. Everyone on the face of the earth, starting with me, deserves hell. And they're like a fire because we are sinners. You might try to go around, you know, saying, Man, no, really, no, me. But the reality is, all the sinners come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. But praise God, they say, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. All the sinners come short of the glory of God, being justified freely through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So Paul says, as we receive mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, no walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Let me ask you, is that possible? What? To handle the word of God deceitfully? Yes. 
Yes. If I handle the word of God to promote myself, my personality, my persona, and to have a follower, followers, so maybe eventually I can ask for money. If I if I don't preach according to the revelation of the mystery given to Paul, if I don't preach the Lord Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, but pre I preach him according to his uh, earthly ministry and say to people that they need to repent, <clears throat> confess their sins, be baptized in water, I will be handling the word of God deceitfully. Deceit. Deceit is typically... You know, deception, lies, deception. The world is full of that. And who is the father of all lies? Satan. Mankind lost, uh, lost as it is in, in, in Adam, in the flesh. We're all sinners. And we all lie. Now, the beautiful thing of the gospel of Christ, when you believe it and receive it, all your sins are forgiven. Ephesians 1, 7, Colossians 1, 14, Colossians 2, 13, 14. All sins, offenses, transgressions are forgiven once and for all. It's not required that we confess sins because they are forgiven if we believe the gospel of Christ. So Paul says, but I have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Typically being dishonest things, they're hidden. If you do something right, you do in the open light. So everybody can see. If you do something dishonestly, you hide what you're doing. Now, you know, there are <clears throat> secret societies religious organization they have secret agendas to promote themselves Satan has gone ministries they go, it's gone ministers of deception <laughs> but Paul says but ever announced the hidden things of dishonesty not walking in craftiness as you know, English is not my language, but I understand that this craftiness would be like a fox. You know, the fox trying to be astute, clever, to trick people, being very crafty. Well, we shouldn't be walking in that, should we? Nor handling the word of God deceitfully. We should really make up our mind and say, you know what? If I don't understand this passage, I'm not going to preach about it. I'm not going to modify the passage to make it to make it mean what, what I think. Because what I think is not important. What the Lord thinks and says, and is written down, that's important. But by, by, by manifestation of the truth, Commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. This is very important. God is watching. The Lord knows everything. He knows my thoughts before I even think them. And He knows what I'm going to say before the words come to my mouth. He knows my beginning, my end. For everyone, He knows everything. He's the Lord. There is a term omniscient, all-knowing God. From eternity past to eternity future. God inhabits eternity. Time is not a problem for him. The Bible is a book of time and timings. We are dispensations. There are dispensations in your past, present, future. We are in the dispensation of grace. But, says Paul in verse 3, if our gospel be hid, it is it to them that are lost. 
Now, Paul uses three times the expression, my gospel, and three times our gospel when it's together with other apostles and believers. In this case, we talk in the book of Corinthians. If we go at the beginning, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God and Timothy, so it's more than one, our brother. That's why it says, if our gospel, because Timothy believes the same gospel. Well, Timothy received this glorious gospel through the ministry of the Apostle Paul. Okay? But if our gospel be hid, is it to them that are lost? That's so terrible, you know. I don't know if, if I don't know if we really understand this. To be lost, meaning at the end of this life, you will go to hell. If you're a woman, you are a man. It doesn't matter. If you are Israeli, you know, so oh, I'm Israeli, I'm a Jew, okay, no, you're not. You are a Gentile. I'm okay, you know, I have nothing to do with this. And no. <laughs> This is not a question being a Jew, a Gentile, man or woman. The question is, we're all sinners. And if you don't receive this gospel of the cross, you're lost. You might not believe this, but that's what the scripture declares. And that's what I'm telling you. And Paul's telling us, but if our gospel, which is the gospel of the grace of God in Christ, be hid, hidden, it is said to them that are lost. I mean, really, whatever you achieve in this life, if you achieve anything, whatever, imagine you are a very successful person. You, you know, you achieve success beyond imagination in business. You accumulate a tremendous amount of wealth gold, silver, money, properties. And then you are lost because you reject the gospel of Christ. It's really total vanity. Because all the accumulates here is not going to help you to on the other side of eternity, like when you leave this earth. And be sure of one thing, everybody does leave the earth eventually. You can run away from this concept if you are uneasy about it, but the reality is if you're born and you're alive now, you're going to die. And if you die lost, you will go to hell. Not that I'm sending you to hell. Being lost, you will can you cannot go to heavenly places to be with Christ. You will go to hell. I know that when people die, people say he was such a good man, a good woman, and they you know they, they, they say all oh, the beautiful, wonderful things. Everybody was so good except you know the evil dictators. But everybody on his that he was such a good man, he was such a good woman. There is none good. None. Except Christ when he walked on this earth. No man or no woman on the face of the earth is good. Was ever good or will ever be. That's why Christ came in this world to save us. That's why he, he went on that cross. He was innocent. He was sinless. He knew no sin. But he died for us sinners. He took the wrath of God against sin so that you don't get it, so I don't get it, so we can be saved. But Paul says, if our gospel, not the gospel of the kingdom, everybody is preaching the gospel of the kingdom, repent, be baptized. God is not building the kingdom. That dispensation has been put on hold. How do you say? It? Yeah. It's on the back burner time for the time being. God is going to restart it. 
after the body of Christ, the new creature gets caught up to meet the Lord in the air, to go and to be forever with the Lord, he will restart what is left that needs to be fulfilled, the prophetic program that needs to be fulfilled, will concern Israel and the rest of the world. But now, in the but now, in the but now, time passed, but now, ages to come, in the but now, don't stay lost. And please, let me tell you, God is not asking you to climb a holy mountain, to go on pilgrimage, to sacrifice, to go on your knees and put pebbles under your knees and suffer, to go through some mystical experience, to call on the name of Jesus, because that's not a gospel. In the future, whoever shall call on the name of the Lord, in the future, they will be saved because it's a different dispensation. In the future, prophetic is written, but now it's required that you believe and receive how the Christ died for us sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And in Romans 4, 25 says that Christ was delivered for our offenses and was risen again for our justification. When you believe this, you are saved by grace through faith. Is that not a works? Is the gift of God not a works on a man should boast? It's a free gift. Romans 5, 5 the gift, the free gift, the gift, free gift is a gift. Thanks to the fact that the price tag, so to say, has been paid by Christ. No one else could. No one else could, because being innocent, and righteous, and holy, he could pay, his blood could atone for our sins. Paul says, but if our gospel be hid, he said to them that are lost. There must be a reason why. Yeah, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Let me ask you, the Bible will challenge you all the time. This book can only be believed and received by faith, because there are lots of things that says that so contrary to the so-called human wisdom, you know, the way we people think. I've seen it today that some people still think that Satan, the devil, goes around with horns, you know, with, with a pitchfork. He doesn't. He is in, into blinding the minds of them which believe not. Honestly, that image is Greek mythology. Nothing to do. He's a fallen sheriff. And he's got power. Oh yeah, he's got power. And his power is the power of the lie. He lies. He lies about God, about Christ, about the Bible, about the faith. Don't worry about that. And he knows the scripture, he can use it better than you, average person. Like, you know, in the age of 23, when I first believed in, a, in Christ, but through a sect, Pentecostalism. I didn't know anything of the Bible, but they knew. And the enemy caught me really good. Because he can quote scriptures very well. But not to save you, but to deceive you. And to keep you blind, or oh, you know, family first. Family is important, but that's not a gospel. Follow Jesus in the red letters. Nobody can. Stop sinning, and God will accept you. If a, if a person, anybody, could stop sinning, what was the reason that Christ died for sinners? Why did Christ die for our sins? 
if we could stop sinning and, and reform ourselves and walk the straight and narrow really good, you know. He's got lots of those false gospels. Normally, periodically, he comes with some prophet with a vision. And he saw Jesus, or God the Father, or the Holy Spirit, and had been told to do this and that, and they create a new denomination. And people flock to that like the bees to the honey. Do they? I don't know. But you just give out the gospel of grace and people think, ah, oh, it's a sect. Oh, it's too easy. You want a difficult? Who are you? God yourself? Now you decide how God can save you. It's written. By grace through faith, but no faith generically, you put your faith in what Christ has accomplished. So you believe Christ and what God Christ has done. You put all your faith in that. And once you do that, according to what is written, it saves you and seals you with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption of the first possession unto the praise of his glory. But Paul says, if our gospel be hid, it is it to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, Satan, the devil, okay, has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Blind the minds, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And Paul says here in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 5, For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. My dear friend, Christ Jesus, the Lord, he is already Lord, has been always Lord, he is God. Fully man, totally man, when he was incarnated, totally God. He didn't, never stopped to be God, you know. He didn't set aside his divine attributes. He didn't empty himself all these heresies that are going around. He's the Lord, so you don't need to make him Lord of your life. He's already Lord. He's the Lord of the dead and the, and the those who are alive and the living. The dead and the living. He's, he's the Lord. Make sure he's your Lord as your Savior and Redeemer, the moment you believe, receive the gospel of the grace of God. Paul says we preach not ourselves. Let me ask you, do you see these denominations that you see everywhere in the Bible? No. Paul was not Baptist or Pentecost or Presbyterian or Methodist or Episcopalian or Roman Catholic or Orthodox or your witness or Mormon or Nazarene. Paul was preaching the gospel of Christ, the gospel of grace of God in the dispensation of grace. Paul, who was the enemy number one, persecuting the little flock, the followers of Christ, met the Lord as the last one to see was seen the Lord. The Lord saved him and gave to him the revelation of the mystery, the gospel of Christ, the gospel of grace, and he made of him the apostle, preacher, teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. He put him in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. And Paul, he never exalted himself like some people say, you know, no, no, no. He doesn't preach himself. Paul and Timothy are not preaching themselves. Come to us. We are the ones who to, to worship and serve. No, 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 no. And what do you see? Kiss my ring all the time. I'm reverend. How do you dare to call yourself reverend when that's a title or an attribute of God? In the Bible, reverend is found once in the Psalms and talks about God. So I don't believe you. Just a moment. In Psalm 111, verse 9, he sent redemption unto his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. That's talking to Israel. 
Holy and reverent is his name. So you find reverent only once in Psalm 111 verse 9. So no man, no woman, no one has a right to say I'm reverent this and that. I will be very careful. We are dust. We are grasshoppers. Now, when, when the Lord, out of his glorious gospel of Christ, by the power of the cross, he saves us by grace, he puts us in Christ, we become, he makes of us members of the body of Christ in particular. We are children of God, children of life. Praise the Lord for that. But that's the operation of God, you understand? It's not, look at me. Sometimes I, I'm really afraid that it's very dangerous to exalt yourself when you preach the gospel. Make sure that the glory and the praise goes to the Lord, who is the only one who is worthy of it. And if Paul is a perfect example to follow in this case, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants, for Jesus' sake. Can you imagine this? Servant minister is the same thing. You know the ministers, they want to be served. In politics, if you are a minister, you have lots of privileges. You get paid a lot of money and all lots of benefits, you know, financial and positionally honorable this and honorable, honorable that, you know. It doesn't matter if he's a crook or not. I'm not saying every politician is. But the point of the matter is, what about serving the people that elected you? For real, for real, and not serving, as often happens, the platform, the agenda of your whatever party. I don't care. I don't go for any. But, Paul is a minister, and so is Timothy, meaning servants. Jesus Servant of God. Peter and James John, servants. To serve the Lord. To serve the Lord for Jesus' sake. And then he says, For God, who commanded the light to shine out out of darkness, when? Book of Genesis. Let's go there. He commanded. Genesis 1. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water, and God said, that's the word, that's Christ, speaking, let there be light. And there was light. In command of God, things happen. The way he wants. And God saw the light. That it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. So going back to. Second Corinthians where we were. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Shine in our hearts. To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. That's very powerful. That's very powerful. To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. You come to know Jesus Christ through the scriptures because you can't see visions. If you see them. You need to see a doctor. To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. When you come to know Jesus Christ through the scriptures, you will have the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. There's none more glorious than him. But, Paul says in verse 7, we have this treasure. Oh yeah, man. Christ in us, the hope of glory, the Spirit of Christ dwelling in us, 
in earthen vessel, earthen vessel. These bodies they wear made of flesh, that does really. Well, that's really mind blowing. I really tell you in total sincerity, it, it really shakes me to the very being, foundation of my being, that the excellency of the power may be of God and of not of us. That's it. The excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. But what was Paul? Was he robbing banks? Was he a mass murderer? Well, before salvation, he was a, a murderer. He was a persecutor, he was injurious, he was blasphemer, he was a lot of bad things, he said himself. But now, since he's saved, he's preaching and teaching constantly what Christ is revealing to him, and he's preaching the gospel of grace, which is a free gift. He's not looking for glory, for position, for exaltation, for money. He's addressing constantly to Christ, the cross of Christ, the resurrection of Christ, the, the, the Lord Jesus Christ, still is getting persecuted. Who's persecuting him? Satan using the Judaizers of his time, you know. Persecuted but not forsaken, because God doesn't forsake him. Cast down but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life also of Jesus might be manifest in our body. Like, yeah, we go for nothing, but Christ is our Lord, the Savior. For we which live our way deliver unto death, for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then works in us, but life in you. We have in the same spirit of faith, According as it's written, I believe that for us spoken, we also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up also by Jesus and shall present us with you. Oh my praise the Lord, this is really colossal. This is immense, immense. Knowing that he, that's the Father, also the Holy Spirit, which shall raise up the Lord Jesus, and the Lord Jesus anyway raised himself up too, so the God there that work here shall raise up also, shall raise up us, the body of Christ, the believers, by Jesus, and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. Wow. When I when I read this word I understand, you know, my limits. I'm very limited. Thank God for this word. Otherwise, you know, my mind could create another Jesus. You understand? That's what happens with the flesh. Stay with the scriptures, for which cause we faint not. But though the our outward man perish. Ask me, I'm 75, I'm falling to pieces. <laughs> yeah, the inward man, the spirit man, which is circumcised with the circumcision of Christ, which is complete in Christ, is renewed day by day. For a light affliction, he calls what we go through in this life a light affliction, especially the, the affliction that Paul and Timothy and, and, and Silvanus and Barnabas you know, the Titus, for our lot affliction, which is, but for a moment, a moment. It is a moment. I'm 75. Yesterday I was 20. You know what I mean? Works for us a far more exceeding and eternal way of glory. Oh man, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Works for us a far more exceeding and eternal way of glory. Oh man. While we look not 
are the things which are seen. Praise God. But the things which are not seen. Why, Paul? For the things which are seen are temporal. A moment. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Praise be to God. We don't see the Father of God. We don't see the Spirit. We don't see Jesus. And I said, you know, don't go around with visions, okay? We don't see angels. We don't see even the devil and the devils. But we know the things which are not seen are eternal. So this reality that we live now is temporary. It's a temporal condition. That's why, my friend, before I finish, and I'm finishing very short, believe in your heart how that Christ died for our sins, so including yours, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day for our justification, so for your justification too. Please, believe, be saved, be sealed by grace. It's for your own good. God is perfect. God is true. Jesus is Lord with or without you, but he died for you. He died for you. He was buried. But he rose again the third day to justify you and give you the free gift of eternal life. I encourage you to believe. That's all I can do. I can't force you. God himself will not force you. Imagine if I can force you. <laughs> Receive this free gift of eternal life. Be saved. Be sealed. Amen. Thank you, Father. We give all the glory and praise and thanksgiving to you. In the wonderful, most precious name of our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.